one thing about me is that everything that I try to do, I, I for the most part, I give my all into it. You know, even when I don't feel like it, because I've trained myself to do so, I always give my all no matter what, right? Even when I'm just tired and I'm out of it and I don't feel like it, for the most part, like 90% of the time, I'm giving my everything, right? Um, so, y'all know, those of y'all don't know, I work for Coca-Cola. I'm a delivery driver for Coca-Cola. And with that, that it comes a level of customer service, right? It's not just making a delivery and that's it. What it comes with is, you know, when I make these deliveries, it's a certain level of customer service that I have to have with my customers, right? And I see these people regularly, weekly or bi-weekly, whatever, however their ordering is. And whether it's a stop, which we call a kick stop, meaning we just deliver the product and we go, or whether it's a stop where we actually need merchandise, meaning like a CVS, Family Dollar, Rite Aid, something like that, we actually have to put the product up, right? We gotta put this stuff away, right? Rotated, things like that. Um, the rule is that we only put up what we bring in because sometimes these stores have so much backstop, what's in the back room, that like it would take us all day to do that and do what we bring in there. So what we do is, we only put up what we bring in. Um, and kind of the guideline for that is that when we, if, if I'm bringing you uh, some Coke, 20 ounces, jumps go in the cooler, um, you know, some Sprite, 20 ounces, once again, in the cooler, right? And you already have Coke and Sprite in the back, then I don't use what I brought in. I use what you already have because, of course, first in, first out. You know what I'm saying? Like that came in last week. I need to rotate that up so we don't have no out-of-date stuff, right? So, prior to me working back at Coke, when I worked back at Coke from 05 to 2012, the way we did it, that's how we did it all the time, right? And I made, but I made sure my level of customer service was high so that my customers loved me, right? Um, a gent, my, my best friend, my brother, we, we, we're godparents to each other's kids, my boy Antonio, I trained him when he decided to become a driver. And, you know, we did things a certain way. Like, everybody knew if you was coming into the Highsville area, Greenville area, we had that thing on locked. It was just what it was. Like, we kept that on tight. And if our customers knew when we wasn't there. So, fast forward, you know, I leave. I get, I, you know, I leave the company 2012 because I got fired away my DUI. Um, so, six years in between that. You know, eventually Antonio ends up taking over a whole new area because we took over, our plant took over Silver Spring, right? I'm just trying to give you a little backstory here. And within that, because he had to take on a whole nother area, the drivers before him left a sour taste in a lot of customers' mouths. So my man, on his own, decided to go a little bit above and beyond to do more for, our, for the customers that we had out there. What did he do? When we get to these stops that we call merchandise stops, once again, what we got to fill up, my man not just only fills up what he bring in, but he goes to the back room, right? See what's in the back room. And if they need it out on the floor, whether he brought that particular flavor in or not, he fills it up. So he might only brought in Coke, Sprite, and Diet. But in their cooler, they need Cherry Coke and Ginger Ale. They got it back there. I'm going to bring it to the front and fill it. Now, what does that mean? Let's say it takes uh, one minute per case to put away, right? That might be long, but let's just say it's one minute per case. Well, now he's added two more cases to the three cases that he already got to fill. But anyway, what does that do? It puts him in control of his stop. I want y'all to hold on to his stop, okay? Because what that does is now he's taking all of the old stuff. He's getting it out on the floor. Because one thing that we say is it can't sell if it's in the back room. Get it out on the floor. Now when the account manager, the sales rep, comes in there to place an order, we can, as a driver... Because he chose to take control of his of this particular stop like that, he already knows before the before the sales rep gets there what the sales rep needs to order for their next week. In essence, because he decided to go a little bit further at this particular stop, he's controlling the outcome of this stop. He's controlling where where normally drivers don't have this control. He's controlling the amount of product that's going in and what's coming out because the extra step that he's choosing to take to get all of this product out on the floor so that it can be can it can be bought, right? I'm riding with my man yesterday, and as we're working, I see that this is what we're doing, and I and all our CVSs and the other stuff that we gotta put everything away. 
And I'm like, bet, all right, we doing the extra mile, let's go. By the end of the day, I said, man, my man has really grown, not on, as a driver and um, let's say a relationship expert, because that's what we, that's what customer service is, developing a relationship, right? My man has grown in the sense of where in, in 2006 and seven, what we held as a standard, as a great driver, my man has, because he's taking ownership of these particular, of these individual stops, he's elevated our game so that now I got to do a little bit more. What's taking ownership? Taking ownership is taking, is assuming responsibility for any particular task or individuals. That's what taking ownership is, right? And with that, in taking that ownership, it comes a certain level of pride. Not that bad pride that, that, that they say is one of the seven deadly sins. I'm talking about that pride that says, you know what? I know what the type of work is that I do. I know that I'm going to give 110% every, every time. I know that when I leave out of this store, there ain't no question of what I've done. I know that when this customer called to talk about me, there ain't no complaint. It's a compliment, right? I know that when uh, my wife leave this house, that she's satisfied with what I've done to take care of the house. And she ain't got nothing to worry about. She ain't got nothing to worry about the kids. I know that when my kids go off to college, they know that daddy going to take care of everything because he got it. Because he's got ownership, right? You take ownership and you assume responsibility. And not only do you assume that responsibility, but you 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 have a level of pride about what you're doing, right? Because once you make when you make something yours, you treat it a whole different level. See, it's the difference between me and my man delivering and then us delivering. What's the difference? This delivering is just us doing the average, the bare minimum, what everybody else do. We bring it in, we fill up what we go up, we don't touch nothing in the back, we leave that for somebody else. What's the above average? The above average is that not only do we put up what we bring in, but we rotate what we, we, we bring out what we brought in in past days, which we're not supposed to do. And we do go even a step further in cleaning up the store in ways that other drivers won't do. Right? When you take ownership of any particular situation, circumstance, that's when you become, that's when you're able to solve problems. See, what my man did by taking ownership of these stops, by saying, this is my store, I'm going to make it the way that I want to, by doing that, he solved a lot of problems in the store. Some of the, the upset issues that these customers had, they don't have them no more because they know who they got coming in, right? Because of him taking ownership of the store, it's easy for him and the customer to deal together. And it's easier for our sales rep and the customer to deal together because they guarantee it was coming in. And then on top of that, what has my man done? He's paved the way for me. He knows how I work. I trained him. We best friends. We gonna walk alike. We talk alike. We act alike. They get us. It's surprisingly, he's a little bit taller than me. He wear glasses and he's a little bit more dark than me. They still get us confused. It's crazy. But that's because we do everything alike. What did he do? He opened the door for me. The other driver that's going to be up here, my man going to take care of you. Don't worry about it. So now when I go into the spots, I assume that same ownership. Now, see, and it wasn't until yesterday that I knew that my guy was doing this next level thing, this above average thing. See, that's the difference between an average person, a mediocre person, and an outstanding person, between a worker and a CEO, Right? The difference between a, 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 a somebody following and a trailblazer is that on the level of ownership that they assume over anything. Because see, the moment that you give your ownership away, then you have no more power. You have no more control over anything. It's gone. Right? If, if I blame, if something that I messed up on, I blame it on somebody else, I'm giving that other individual the power because now that individual can say, you know what? I did do this. I did do that. Let me clean that up. Let me straighten that up. Let me take care of that without any without any problems. So I'm asking you, what are you taking ownership of in your life? What are you assuming responsibility for? What thing are you being prideful about? You've done all you can. That you've given 110% to this circumstance or situation or person. Right. And you can feel good about it. It's a it's a feeling of, um, um, you know, it's self-worth in there. It's a confidence booster. All these different type of things. And remember, to take, and you taking that ownership is putting you on another level. It's separating you 
you have just raised the bar. You're separating yourself from anybody else that's ever been in this situation or walked in this individual's presence. Period. Right? What's the situation you got to take ownership of? That's the question I want to ask you. Is it something with your kids? Something with your spouse? Is it at your job? And you know what? Let me let me hang on to this job thing because a lot of us are at jobs that we don't like. Thankfully, I'm fortunate enough to be at a job that I like. At that job, if you take ownership of the work that you're doing, right, even if you don't like it, when you take ownership of it and you resume respond, uh, you 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 take responsibility of the work that you're doing, then you're gonna give a little bit more to that work because now your name on the line, your credibility is on the line. Like everything that you do is linked up to your credit. And if you don't take that certain level of pride and you stay on that little average level, then that's what people are gonna see you at. Take ownership of some things in your life, whether it be your happiness, the problems that you have in your life. Man, I could tell y'all about some problems. I could tell y'all about some problems, trust me. Before I got right here in this seat in front of y'all, oh, me and my wife had some stuff we had to deal with. You know, we had some, we had to find some solutions to some things, you know what I'm saying? And not that me and her had a problem, it's just that as a unit, we got things that we got to deal with just like all y'all do. But we had to take ownership of it and we had to get control of it. Because when you take ownership, remember, you gain control. When you gain control, you can come up with solutions and not be so stressed out about problems. You're not giving your power away. Now, you starting to come alive. Because you got that ownership. You got that power. You got some solutions. Right? You, 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 you got your confidence is up. Your pride is good. So... That being said, I'm about to shut it down. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Remember, what's yours is yours. Take some ownership. Create value. And that right there will make you come alive. I'm Miguel Brown. I'm your guy. I see y'all when I see y'all. All right? I'm out of here.